What's up guys and welcome back. I'm back here at McGrath Volvo Cars in Fort Myers, Florida and this is one of the most sought after vehicles on the planet right now, at least what it seems like. This is a 2022 Ford Bronco Outer Banks edition. As a matter of fact, it's so popular that Ford decided to stop taking orders, retail orders on 2023 Broncos on their website, sadly, because I really wanted one. Anyways, Today, I'm gonna to take you the complete tour of this vehicle. We're gonna check it out from the exterior, interior, jump inside, play with some cool and interesting features. At the end of this video, I'm gonna take you for a ride with me together. Now, before we do all that crazy stuff, if you like watching automotive content, my name is Matt, and here on Matt the Car Guy, I post two car reviews every single week. So if you would like to check out the rest of my channel, hit that subscribe button if you wanna be part of the Matt the Car Guy family. And if you like this video, give me a like or two. Now, let's get back to this. Well, this generation Ford Bronco has only been around for about a year or so, definitely started creating waves in the automotive industry. It is cool, but it's also a lot of people have that love it or hate it relationship with it. I gotta tell you, to me, it's awesome, okay? It's so good that I wanted to order one myself. Unfortunately, Ford stopped taking retail orders for 2023 model year, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I might go back and actually get a Jeep Wrangler. But let's take a look at this particular vehicle. There is eight different trim levels that are available on the Bronco. And most of them are available in either two-door or four-door, which makes it 16. So in typical Ford fashion, they really, really make it confusing. But at the same time, they make sure that everybody has the option to choose what they want. And the different trim levels are as follows. Now I have my phone opened with the Ford website on, so I don't want to give you the wrong information. It starts with the base model. And the two-door base, according to Ford, starts at 31,300, so it's a very inexpensive vehicle. Now that's base, base, base. Now it's also available in the four-door and then the big band, two-door and four-door, 35,785, black diamond, 37,950. Other banks is what we have right here. Now this one is starting at 41,355. The original sticker on this particular one was over $53,000. So it actually has about $10,000 or just a little bit more than that of options added onto it. So I'm gonna, make sure that you know what they are uh, and post it in the description of this video so you can check it out yourself. Uh, but after uh, Outer Banks, you have the Badlands Edition at 44,495 Wild Track. This is the high speed off roading. And then you have the Everglades. That's the only trim that's only available in the four door, as well as the highly anticipated new Raptor, which is not out yet. That's only available in the four door. And the Raptor starts at 68.5. So there's a little bit for everybody to choose from. So all of the Broncos are gonna have basically the same sheet metal. They're gonna have the same, you know, look from the outside. There might be some different features available on uh, different trim levels. We're gonna point out some of them. But let's say, for example, the hood. The hood is the same on all of them, right? They might have some decals, but the shape of it is basically identical. It does have those two raises on the side with the trim pieces. They're actually functional over here. They have a maximum load of 150 pounds in case, I guess, if you wanna put something on top of it. or they could serve as something to tie down your kayak if you have it on your roof rack or some people say that you could run like a wire between this and the roof rack if you had one on top of it to prevent any of the brush from hitting your windshield which also would make sense as well so it does have this raise also in the back of this hood and everything else is pretty 
plane. Now, they call this a combination, the, this trim, Outer Banks, the combination of luxury and off-roading. And you can see that it does have this more luxurious grille, if you will, that's all piano black. Bronco spelled out in white lettering, and it does have the LED lights. Now, they're very unique to the brand that have this uh, unique daytime running lights and this halos uh, that are also daytime running lights. And uh, you can definitely see that at night, and you can see that that Bronco is following. There's nothing else like this. It does have this front view camera, and this particular one was upgraded with this modular steel bumper. Now, that's an accessory that's available from Ford as well. It's all steel, nice for off-roading, and this one has the also steel skid plates underneath to prevent the vehicle from getting damaged if you are off-roading. Now, we're going to pop the hood. There's two different engine options available, and we have the bigger one right here. Well, the last Bronco that I did was a 2.3 liter engine, four cylinder. Now this is a 2.7 V6 EcoBoost producing up to 330 horsepower, 415 pound feet of torque. I said up to because those are the numbers based on using premium gasoline. You'll knock off about 15 horsepower and about uh, 10 pound feet of torque if you use the regular gas. Now the only transmission that's available with the V6 is a 10 speed automatic transmission, which is actually handles pretty well on the Ford. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Look how this engine has everything on top exposed. I would like to see the engine cover on it. Now some people might argue that at least you see what's on top of the engine and it's an easier access. Well, that could be a point too, but nobody's gonna talk me into it saying that the prop stick is the best option for a vehicle. I still would like to see some hood struts on it and what's underneath the hood itself is the sound insulation will make it for a nice and quiet ride on the inside. If you like square, you'll definitely like the side profile on this one. It's about as square as it can get. I like it, but that's not for everybody. I like the Jeep Wrangler, I like the Ford Bronco as well. Now this one is a little bit bigger. I think it's a little bit taller if you compare the two. It's definitely a little bit wider and the seats are more comfortable on the inside, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. So take a, take a look at the side profile of this particular vehicle. I like how they did the fender flares in the same color on this Outer Banks trim. Now, if it was me, I'd like to see them a little bit wider with the black accents or maybe even in black, matte black, but then those are available uh, as an accessory, also available on other trims. Standard wheel setup on this particular one, 18 inch wheels, 255 and 70 by 70. This is the size of the tires. They are pretty knobby, but they're not the typical off-road tires. You can definitely take them on the road without sacrificing much of the right quality. You have the side steps right underneath here. And what's pretty cool about this is the mirrors stay with the body on the car if you take the doors off. So the doors are removable. You can take the doors off, you can take the top off, make it look naked. It's actually a very, very nice setup. And on this trim level, mirrors also have the turn signal that's built in, the blind spot assist, and the camera right underneath here. You also see an optional keypad that was added to this particular vehicle, and that's pretty much it. Overall, you know, this vehicle uh, has the same track in front and back the same width and the same height as the four-door bronco however the wheelbase is about six inches shorter on this one and about 17 inches shorter as a total length of the vehicle one a uh, very important thing to mention too, that this is a four-seater. It only does have two seats in the back versus the five-seater on the four-door Bronco. So that could help you make your decisions if you ever uh, have to make one like this. Now let's move to the back. As for a typical off-roader, you have this tire right on the back over here and what's sticking out from the tire is the rear view camera which is mounted right on the inside now there's a third brake light over here and this particular trim has the led taillights which uh, are kind of in this reversed letter b stands for bronco they incorporate basically the turn signals reverse lights as well as uh, the regular taillights. Now, the way you open the gate, before we do that, let's talk about the bumper. Now, the front bumper was upgraded with the modular steel. The rear bumper is still plastic. It does have the recovery hook on the side. Trailer hitch was added to this particular vehicle. As far as towing capacity, it does have 3,500 pounds. So not the greatest, but if you have a pair of jet skis or small boat or small camper, you can definitely pull it with this one. And uh, on uh, this side, you have the Bronco logo and the exposed hinges, which uh, 
um, makes it look pretty nice. I like how this gate opens, right? It opens nice and wide, same kind of deal like on the Jeep Wrangler, and then you have this rear glass that opens up on top. Let's see if we have any room inside. Well, as expected, you won't find a ton of room in the two-door Bronco. However, you do have a little bit more storage right underneath here if you wanted to hide something. And right over here, you can see the different lassos that are pictured on those hooks. They put something on top of it, secure it. You do have a little bit of an illumination in the back 12-volt power outlet. You have the LED lights with the little Bronco logo right in the middle over here. And I like how, you know, you can see you can take basically the whole thing out and this will all be exposed you can see the speakers are built in here and this one has been upgraded with some six stereo so we're going to check that out in the future and uh, well as far as the seats here the seats do fall down just in case you were wondering that's a pretty easy type of deal you just basically pull the lever and let it go and it will fall let's get inside of this vehicle but before we do that let's hear how the door sounds when you close it actually not bad I mean I'd probably give it about 7 out of 10 which is uh, pretty good considering that this is a frameless design and the doors are also removable so you can take the whole things out like you do on the Jeep Wrangler and then you'll have this naked looking vehicle but overall a very interesting design on the door panel itself now you do have a lot of plastic a lot of hard plastic uh, down at the bottom off here but at the top you do have a little bit of brown a little bit of this polished aluminum collar and uh, that's pretty much it a little bit of netting you know if you wanted to put you know a chocolate bar or something else in here and then the only thing on the door as far well as the controls are the lock controls we have the windows on the other side of it now let's just check this out really quick now this is a two-door configuration so in order to get into the second row seat you need to move this front seat forward and you know it's fairly easy to use and take a look at the rear seat they're actually fairly comfortable I sat inside them and for two people there's enough room and there's no third seat so that's the only configuration that you have but what I really like are the front seats. The front seats are super comfortable. They're wide, they're adjustable several different ways. And in this particular case, they have been upgraded to these vinyl seats with leather trimming. You see that Bronco embossed in here. I like that brown and black coloring on here really nice really classy now let's check out the rest of this interior what we have right here is this rugged looking handle with the bronco spelled out over here and then you have this brown trim on top kind of matching the rest of the interior left hand side at the bottom of the steering wheel you have the light controls you also have the mirror uh, light controls and then you have your dimmer for the instrument cluster which we'll get to in just a second and then you have uh, your hood opener and then just a regular pedal it's nothing crazy about here let's get inside i have to start this vehicle because it's getting so hot in here so check this out this is how the interior looks Okay, as far as the look, it's very easy to look at. I, I think it's one of the nicest looking interiors out of any of those off-road vehicles. I think I take it over the Jeep Wrangler, although some of those Rubicons are pretty cool too. So um, I like the two-tone, or actually a three-tone basically, because if you have this bronze, you have this uh, silver color Bronco spelled out over here, and then you have your regular black. Now that's where your glove box is underneath here. Um, you have your regular vents and uh, this big screen part of this uh, actually it's part of the high package but uh, this one has a lux package which is higher than that so it includes that screen as well 12 inch screen and then uh, let's move up on top see what we have we're actually going to start over here so the, the tops are removable so you have two panels in the front and then the back is removable as well fairly easy to do you all you have to do is unlatch this this and the two in the back and you basically take them out put them somewhere safe what else we have right on top console we have those pre-wired switches auxiliary switches there's no auxiliary equipment that's that's installed on this particular one so they're not assigned to anything right now but if you put any light bulbs or anything like this you can assign them to it led lights and that's pretty much it what you have on top of it regular mirror nothing crazy scrolling down right in front of here you have the usb port and then you have this mount for the camera for example that you can use that 
and then you have some switches over here as you can see they're marked one of them is the uh, rear diff lock then the sway bar disconnect you have the traction control off and the hazard lights and the 12 inch screen but staying up on top of here you have the bang and olufsen stereo this is the upgraded stereo it actually sounds pretty darn good steering wheel pretty decent okay leather wrapped you'd have some contrast stitching bunch of buttons on both sides left hand side you have your volume control you have your cruise control settings on the right hand side you have basically your pages and whatever is controlled in the infotainment in instrument cluster as well as your phone and the voice control so let's take a look at this instrument cluster right here that's pretty cool I've seen it on the other one before the only thing that you have like the analog is basically your speedometer on the left hand side and underneath here you have the temperature control and here you have this screen that's uh, customizable right here now you have the uh, miles per hour and RPMs, that's the basic settings. We well, can change that to the way that you want to change. So you have the My View right now, you hit OK. Trip Fuel, Off Road, Navigation, so you can have different settings like an Off Road settings. Pitch and Roll, let's leave it right here. And right here on the right hand side, it shows your pitch and roll. And then you can go back in there, you can do the power distribution. So you can see which wheels are getting the power, etc. So a lot of customization that's going in here, something that you'll need. Um, you know, very important thing, tire pressure, especially if you're off-roading and deflating the tires a little bit. Different gauges, so you have your turbo PSI temperature controls for the coolant and the transmission and your voltage for the battery. So again, you have the turbo boost, depending on what you like to be displayed in front of you. That's what you can actually set up. So everything off-road status, basically it just tells you this is in rear wheel drive right now, which is true. And if I did switch it to a four high, it says four by four shift in progress. And it's gonna show you right here that right now we have the four by four engaged. Switch it back to the two wheel drive. And while we're at this screen right here, I want to show you some of the GOAT modes, okay? So what we have here is we have a normal mode, Eco, Sport, Slippery, Mud Ruts, Sand. I believe those are all the modes that are available in the normal mode. So yeah, I'll leave it in the normal mode for now. Uh, get a little bit more into those drive modes in just a second. And let's move on to this 12 inch screen okay looks very impressive i gotta tell you if i wanted to order a bronco definitely would have to have this screen if it didn't have that screen it would be a deal killer that's why i wanted to go with the everglades edition so this is the new sync 4 system the newest sync uh, system by ford and it's fairly easy to use plus i like the how the screen looks to be honest with you so right at the bottom you have different settings right so you have your audio settings and now we have this Bang & Olufsen stereo and you know I checked it out it actually does sound very very impressive I don't know if I would spend all that money to get it but um, you know it is on this particular one so you have your phone settings so you can add the phone your navigation that's included in this uh, high-end uh, Lux package and uh, what else you have you have uh, apps Apple CarPlay Android Auto search for your vehicle on your device so basically it does have the wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto features zone lighting driver assistance towing owner's manual you know trailer sway control zone lighting you can see turn that on or off to use zone lighting to control these lights turn off the following physical switches okay you have to turn off the light and there you go now i can have all zones so the lights this whole vehicle will be illuminated if i wanted to okay driver's assistance let's see what features we have that are available in here so we have a cruise control lane keep system pre-collision assist rear view camera blind spot information system park aid sensors cross traffic drive alert tons of driver assist features in here what also is important in here you can see your temperature it's 92 degrees right now it is a automatic climate control so you can see that it's uh, actually changing the temperature here it is also a dual zone so i can change the temperature for the driver and passenger that's separate over here 
overall pretty cool setup. We can change and see of what's going on on this uh, one fourth of a screen to the right. Basically, kind of a similar setup as we've seen on the instrument cluster. You can see the zone lighting. You can see the audio. Several different features that are available. Okay, so you can see what's playing basically. Scrolling down underneath here, you basically have some hard buttons. So your volume and tune knob, and turn the whole thing off. Okay, camera, which is important actually. Let's take a look at this. So you have your 360 camera on this particular one. This is the rear view camera. And then we have the front view camera over here. And uh, this is your front view, wide angle. Important for off-roading, especially. That's why they put those cameras up front. And then uh, we have this camera right here. Now, uh, do they have the trajectory lines? If I have to put it in reverse, I believe. There you go. Put it in reverse, trajectory lines. They're actually active trajectory lines. They move with the steering wheel and put it back in park. So the camera system, it's okay. It's not the greatest quality, but oh well, I mean, it's, uh, it is what it is. I wish it was maybe a little bit more detailed. All right, let's turn down the fan just a bit. And then we can see um, you do have so knobs for the temperature control. You can turn off the entire system. And you have a separate for the driver and passenger. And that's basically all the settings for the climate control. You also have the heated seats on this and the heated steering wheel. That's the rear window defroster because we do have a hard top and that rear glass does have a defroster. Over here, right underneath, you have a USB-C and the USB ports. That's a pretty cool shifter for the Bronco. Now, if you wanted to shift your gears manually, you have the plus and minus. Once you put it in drive, you actually don't have to move it to the right or the left. You just use the up and down button. And uh, basically, that's what you have here is your regular gears. And then, oh, actually, you have to put it in the manual mode in order to use it. Okay, I apologize for that. I didn't see that. Moving back, you do have this dial for your GOAT modes as well as the switch between the four-wheel drive and the two-wheel drive. So you have the two-wheel drive high, four high, four automatic, four low. And then you have this button over here that's basically trail control. So that uh, is going to enable this one pedal drive and um, it's going to help you move along the trail without, you know, uh, acceleration, rapid acceleration or braking, which, you know, it's not really desirable when you're trail riding. The GOAT modes, we already looked through them. This is how you change them. This is a pretty cool knob. And then you have your window controls and the mirror controls. Well, obviously, I mean, the, the doors can be removed, so there's no need to disconnect those while the doors are being removed. And the one last thing to show you is actually this console over here. So you have some storage over here. This is it, guys. Let's see how this two-door Bronco drives. Now I'm going to take this vehicle on for a drive really quick. And here's what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm looking for a few things. I'm looking at the responsiveness of the engine, the comfort of drive, and the overall feel. Okay, it's not gonna be a zero to 60 and we're not gonna take it on the uh, Rubicon Trail because there's just not such a thing around here. But what I do wanna do is a slight acceleration and then we're gonna do some turns and uh, I'll give you my feeling of this vehicle. So first of all, I'm gonna start with the uh, acceleration. It looks like there's a perfect place over here. I can stop and uh, accelerate. Okay, get it up to about uh, 50 miles per hour. So it was decent. It was, you know, not something that you're gonna uh, win any of the street races, but uh, if you wait for the Raptor, you might actually consider that if you're that type of person that you wanna take it off uh, road really, really quick. Now, uh, overall, the visibility. I mean, I like the visibility on this vehicle. The front windshield, nice, wide, uh, gives you this panoramic view, basically. Side visibility, that's really nice. Rear visibility, I'd have to get those headrests down in order to uh, see a little bit better. I hope that in the future, a lot more manufacturers are gonna start putting those rear view cameras inside the mirror so you can see the monitor no matter what's behind it. And no, I'm not saying, hey, just back it up so you don't hit the pole, but 
the vehicles are tall and you can't see pretty much anything behind it so this would be good for two reasons you know not everything is going to be picked up by a regular rear view camera one of the concerns about this vehicle before i started test driving it was how bumpy will it be because of the short wheelbase that it has and it's definitely not as smooth as the forder that i've driven but it's not overly bumpy it's not as bouncy as uh, some of the base jeep wranglers that i've driven you can definitely it's, you, you can feel every single bump on the road acceleration is pretty good visibility is decent you know really doesn't bounce around as much as i thought it would uh, the one concern that i have and i don't know if the cameras are picking up this whistling noise from the hardtop there's three panels as i mentioned on top the two in the front and one in the back and i don't know if there's gaps between them that create this noise or maybe the, this just particular vehicle so um, if you know more information i know they've had some issues at the very beginning but that was for 2021 this is 2022 so maybe that's an early production one i guess definitely a a great contender in the off-road segment and this one is just the right combination of luxury and ruggedness on uh, this vehicle so if you uh, thought you're never going to take it off road but in the meantime you're going to decide that you're going to do that that's a perfect trim because it's capable and it's luxurious and uh, if you were to buy it as a typical off-roader but at some point you go like yeah maybe i just need the regular daily driver and i like some of the amenities comfort and luxury amenities then again this might be a perfect combination for you so overall a good experience I, I think that uh, ford's done a nice job on these vehicles they would have done even a better job if they were able to provide as many of them as people are willing to order but maybe that time is coming in the future but in the meantime if you are looking for one this is on the pre-owned inventory of volvo cars of fort myers florida and check out their website the price and everything is in there we're just not the channel where we discuss pricing discounts or anything like this i don't work for a dealership guys thank you very much for watching i hope this was helpful i hope you learned something and i hope you enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already and you like this automotive content then do me a favor go to the right hand side of your screen right at the bottom of there's a red subscribe button go ahead and click that i'll see you in my next video cheers